Hey everyone, it is Chantel Girardi from Online Business Marketing and today I'm going to be talking to you about working and not getting paid. Um, and I'm not going to lie, this is going to trigger the crapola out of many of you. And um, I, I'm going to say that right now. So have paper and pen and I want you to know that this is coming from um, personal experience. It's coming from experience in having watched many of my clients go through this themselves and it the reason I'm actually doing this is because I genuinely care about people um, living a productive and profitable life where they can play more so this completely comes from a space of I've been there and from a complete judgment-free space but this is honestly my personal experience my personal take on it um, and it is a mix of practical woo-woo and like it is so diverse in what I'm about to share with you today. So again, as usual, I'd like for you to have two pieces of paper and the one is to just jot down sort of anything, anything. And it's like, yep, 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 I've got to get to that. But then on that second piece of paper, I want you to write high priority items. And we are going to go through one of these segments. So there's four sections and all of them have quite a lot in those four sections. But the one section I'm actually going to make you go through and I'm going to actually, actually make you answer those questions. So we're not going to leave here until you've done that. So I want you to honor this time and honor, honor yourself by, by doing that. Um, but I do need you to forgive me right from the beginning because I know that this is going to trigger some of you and um, and I do get it because I've been there and in fact I've been triggered by some of the stuff and gone what the hell what a load of BS and then something's happened to me a couple of months later and I've gone oh my gosh that person genuinely knew what they were talking about and was genuinely trying to impart some help into my life. Um, and that is what I want from you today, okay, from all different aspects, because you'll know I'm the most practical person out there, but I very much have a woo-woo side, and I very much also have a Christianity spiritual side as well. So I'm seriously a mixed bag, um, and I'm going to give you the mixed bag of um, kind of like that marvelous creation dairy milk chocolate they bought out where they put like all the lollies and then the crackles and everything. And it's like everything inside the chocolate and it just shouldn't work, but it does. That is what you're getting today. You're getting marvelous creation chocolate um, solution today of uh, working and not getting paid. Okay. So take a couple of deep breaths because we're about to get right into it. So um, firstly, Ramsey Solution uh, conducted a study of over 1,000 millionaires and they found that 97% believed that they could become millionaires. Okay, that was the ingredient, the formula, is that they honestly believed that they could become millionaires, 97% of millionaires. Um, and then if you have a look at um, another study, they went and looked at lotto winners and people who won money and they looked at them and over the five years of lotto winners winning money and money was obviously going to be the solution for getting them out of debt, most of lotto winners go back to having absolutely no money and being in debt again. All right, take from that what you will. So money problems cause self-sabotage. Um, because the deep-rooted negative money beliefs inside you will cause you to self-sabotage, um, things like overspending and procrastination. Number two, money problems cause difficult difficulty in actually receiving, attracting, asking for money because you actually deter it, which in effect will cause you to have further debt and cash flow issues. And the third part of money problems cause is stress and anxiety. And stress and anxiety can affect your mental well-being, which can also affect your decision-making. It can affect your creativity, your problem-solving, and it can also lead to mental health issues and relationship breakdowns, all right? So this is why we're here today, because I have been in this in different capacities throughout my journey of becoming a successful business owner. So I've been there. I've cried through it. I have wanted to give up a thousand gazillion times. I almost want to cry now. I have honestly been there and I don't want that for you. 
So these are the four things that I broke it down to. And they are psychological and behavioral deficiencies. Okay, so there are deficiencies. It's kind of like if you have a vitamin and mineral deficiency inside your body, you've got to identify what those deficiencies are. And then you've got to become self aware. You're aware of those deficiencies and you've got to do something about it. And these are the four that I've come up with. So, number one is lack of work ethic. Number two is lack of faith. Number three is lack of discipline. And number four is lack of financial literacy. So looking at the four things that I've just claimed, rate yourself out of four on your piece of paper right now. Do you think that you are deficient? So psychologically and behaviorally deficient in your work ethic, in in your faith or belief system, in your discipline or in your financial literacy? Okay, write that down. All right, so number one, we're going to focus on um, the practical side of working and not getting paid, and it comes down to your work ethic. And really, this relates to not being goal-orientated and organized. So not being goal-orientated or even focused and organized. So this is the one that I said that you all are actually going to do today. So write this down. There are seven things, and I want you to answer all of these seven things. Because even today, if you just do this one this one exercise with me, I truly believe that this is going to make a difference for you. Um, and it's before I get into some other horrible realizations a little bit later on that may trigger you and make you procrastinate and make you not do this. So I'm going to ask you to do this exercise. So number one, you're not fixated on a specific make money goal. So how much do you want to make by doing what for who? And write that down. So firstly, what is your specific money goal for the year, for the week? I actually think we did this with Kim recently in a session. In a Specifically, in a week, how much do you want to make? In a year, what do you want to make? Now, it does need to be realistic. It does need to be realistic. It can't be too overwhelming. So it does need to be realistic. How much money do you want to make by doing what for who? Now, this is actually a think and grow rich principle where they say it's better to associate an energy exchange with what you're wanting to achieve. Because if you're just money focused and you're not you're not focused on the energy exchange of what the service is going to be, you're less likely to do it. So how much do you want to make? So everybody needs to have an amount that is realistic written down. And you need to be able to see it. And I'm sure it was Kim that we did did it with this week now, remembering back, where we wrote, I said to her, write a figure and put it there and go, that is my weekly amount that I need to chase. Because, listen to the sentence, you're not fixated on a specific make money goal. So you're fixated on doing things in your business, but it's not a make money goal. So what is the amount and what are you going to do for that? And I want you to fixate on it. So you need to see it. You need to know it. You need to want it. It needs to excite you and not overwhelm you. Right, everyone should have that written down. Number two. You're not prepared to change or give up something to reach that goal. So there are some things right now that are in the way of you reaching that goal. So I used to say this in personal training. You want to lead an active and healthy lifestyle, but you're going to you're going out every Friday night to the cocktail bar and getting absolutely smashed and you can't train for three days afterwards and then you can't afford a personal trainer, you can't afford training or you can't afford health supplements. So what do you need to give up or change and stop doing that's going to help you actually achieve that goal? Are you going to give up Netflix? Drinking. So what do you have to give up 
in order to achieve that goal? The irony is, is everyone knows the answers to this when I ask you, so write it down. Number three, you don't have a deadline, which means there's no sense of urgency. It's not in your diary. So for me, when I was broke and on the bones of my behind and had to feed my children and I was personal training clients, on a Sunday, I would write how much money I needed to have, have made in that week to be able to buy groceries and feed my family. There was a sense of urgency and I could see it. So I was fixated on the amount. I had to make that amount by that date or I couldn't pay the rent, couldn't pay my bills, couldn't feed the family. So I not only saw the amount, it was in my diary and there was a sense of urgency to, to make that amount. So is it in your diary that by this date, I will make that amount? And I am going to empower you with some other stuff that's going to help you right now because I know right now some of you are going to be choked up. And I know because I've been there. I'm actually getting those feelings. They're actually coming up as I'm, as I'm talking to you about it right now. So I'm feeling it for you. But write it down. You have to have a deadline of when you're going to achieve that amount does need to be realistic. Number four, you don't have a plan and a backup plan. So you need to have actionable tasks in your diary that are going to help you achieve that. So if I wrote that figure on a Sunday in my diary and I had to make that money by Sunday, I had to go, how many personal training clients do I have to see in order to make it? Where in my diary can I fit those eight personal training clients? And I would have put a blank spot in there for those clients. And then I would work out who are those people and how am I going to find them? So when Hannah was one years old, I had to do mother's group personal training because I had to be in the park with my one-year-old daughter. And I wanted to do it when she was sleeping. So I would get those clients when she was sleeping. So then I would find other mothers who had one-year-old children who were sleeping at the same time. And we all had prams of kids the same age or sleeping so they could exercise and not worry about it. Actionable tasks went into my diary the week before to achieve the task at the end of the week so that you would not be complacent. So I'm going to wait here and I'm going to make you do that because you've written the amount of money that you've got to make at the end of this week. Now I need you to go into your diary and I need you to write actionable tasks. Of course, you've taken out the tasks that are holding you back, the things that you need to get rid of. For example, grocery shopping, what a waste of time. You can go online, order your groceries, you spend less and you can either pick it up or have it delivered. rather than roam around a shop for two hours and spend money on stuff you don't need. So in your diary, write and allocate time, the actionable tasks that you need to do to achieve that amount of money. And even if when I didn't have those people, I still blocked out the time in my diary because I could manifest or energetically go, these people I'm putting in that place because that suits me. And it made it easier for me to find them. So I'm going to give you some time to do that. Okay, next one. Number five, you haven't affirmed to yourself and others that you're going to do this. Write a clear and concise mission statement. So, for example, I, Chantel Girardi, will hold a webinar on the 4th of August that will have a sales funnel to generate happy paying customers from social media and, they will, and three of them will buy my programs. I will show up every day for 20 minutes 
and, and follow the process to engage my audience, get registrations and nurture those relationships to build know, like and trust so they become customers. So how are we empowering ourselves with an affirmation and accountability by not only telling ourselves, but telling others that this is what we're going to do and act like it's happening? Train your willpower muscle. So write a mission statement now and write it. I, Tara Cameron Smith, will. And what will you do to achieve that goal? And I know that right now some of you are writing this down and it's going to be freaking the crap out of you. Trust me, just do it. I remember shaking and doing this. I remember not believing while I was doing it. I remember feeling like I was lying when I was doing it. Write a statement, a mission statement. that is acting like it is happening. There's no try in it. Please do not use the word try. You're either doing it or you're not doing it. Trying is not doing it. Okay, number six, write it out twice a day, sorry, read it out twice a day with conviction. So the best way to do this is this becomes your brush your teeth activity. You brush your teeth twice a day. So with conviction, you will read it out. To train your willpower muscle. I will read it out twice a day. So every day as you wake up and before you go to sleep, you are focused and fixated on achieving that goal and you are empowering yourself and you are forward focused. You are not backward focused. And the last one, which is number seven. What can you do to make this easier for yourself? So what can you do to make this easier for yourself? Well, put the affirmation on your mirror where you brush your teeth. Set an alarm in your diary. Set notifications in your, cal in your calendar. Block out a day in a workspace and go to a, a workspace and work out of a workspace for the day. Turning off your phone for the day. What can you do to make achieving that goal easier? If your children are driving you nuts, put, it, put them into daycare for a day. How, what can you do to set yourself up for success? So VIPs are, that are um, live with us today, at the end, we'll go through how challenging this was for some of you if you want to share um, and what tr really triggered you. But I want you to pay attention to the triggers because this next part is going to make sense of those triggers, hopefully. And you don't have to believe me. You've just got to believe that it's possible and you've just got to want change. All right, so the second part of the physical... Uh, physiological and behavioral deficiencies is faith. Okay. Faith's a, a tough one. Whatever you believe in, believe in the universe, believe in crystals, believe in God, Buddha, whoever you believe in. Okay. Whatever you believe in. And, and I actually believe in the universe and God at the same time. So, as I said, I'm a little bit of a mixed bag. So, we're going to go into that. So, a little bit of the woo woo and spiritual side. 
this is stuff that I have physically seen in my life work itself out. And I have seen work out in my clients and other people. So I'm not sharing with you something that I've studied or heard. I've seen it for myself and I've seen it for, my, for others. So why are we working and not getting paid? So now, firstly, you create what you focus on. You are a magnet which attracts what you're thinking, talking, and focusing on. Now, if you haven't heard of it before, there's this thing called the negative bias. And basically, the, the megigla, can't say it, menigla inside of your brain is programmed from when you were running around wild, chasing animals and hunting and gathering. It is programmed to see the negative to protect you. It is designed that way. Okay. I think Jay's going to have, Jay will be flying, but I think she could probably share some more light onto this as well. Um, but that's about as much as I know. When you know that, when you know that the brain is actually designed to do that, when it pops up and you suddenly go into the negative, you can go, that's my brain trying to protect me from something. Thank you, brain. I know that you're doing what you're meant to do, but I actually don't need you to do that right now for me. And this is where you can train and look at it from a different perspective. If you don't do that and you go down the Manigla's, whatever his name is, way, you're just going to be sucked into the negative bias and the negative side of things. So when you're aware of it, you can look at it from a different perspective, thank it, and go down a different path. And, of course, speaking to professionals like Jay um, or Angelique who are more versed in this area or even Sally, thank you, amygdala. There we go. Thank you for pronouncing it, <laughs> amygdala. Um, I'm just going to call it Amy for short. <laughs> um, when you go down that, you can work with professionals, which is one of my which is one of my things over here. This is not my space, but it's what I see and what I've known. So number one, your attitudes and your beliefs, your money mindset, where you can look at what you actually believe. If you believe, do you believe you can? Do you believe you are worthy? Do you believe people will spend money with you? Seriously, do you believe people have money to spend with you? Because if you don't believe that they will spend money with you, well, they won't. And you'll attract that. So you have to look and become self-aware of your beliefs and reframe and also deal with them from a subconscious level. Number two not paying your bills and what you say about not paying your bills. So if you do not pay your bills or if you talk about bills in a negative sense or you talk about I have no money to pay my bills, guess what? You're going to create it in your world. And I have done this. I have done this. Pay to all what is owed to them. Pay your debts, even your taxes. Owe no one nothing. Those who water will be watered. It is biblical across uh, the Jesus side of things to the Indian side of things to the woo-woo side of things. So please check yourself and how you deal with what happens when a bill comes in. How do you feel? What do you say? What do you think? Be aware, reframe. Number three, giving not because you want to receive. So people will give to save on taxes um, or they won't give at all because they believe they don't have money. So why should they give anything? But giving actually shows that you have an abundance mindset and not a scarcity mindset. And when you give, you give because you want to give, not because you want to receive. So check that you have some of that in your life. Number four, forgiving your past financial mistakes. How many times do we go, oh, my gosh, I work with that business coach. And, you know, and I had to do it recently because, well, not recently, two years ago, because I spent government mon money with a lady and she never ended up delivering on it. And I was like, I spent this $5,000 and she didn't deliver. And, 
you know, and I kept just repeating this the whole time. And I went, she didn't deliver, but not everyone's a dickhead, you know, just get over it. I forgive you. I forgive myself for my financial mistake and I forgive you. Freaking hard, but you need to do it. <laughs> burn, write it on a piece of paper and burn it on a fire on a full moon. Blow it up to the sun. Like I do it quite like, <laughs> you know, use some essential oils and forgive it. Um, but whatever that process is, I do like the fire and blow them to the moon and flick them as well. Um, but that's how I deal with it. But that helps me go through that process. So whatever it is for you, it doesn't have to be like a, oh, I forgive you and now I love you. It doesn't have to be like that. Whatever it is, just be aware of it and forgive yourself and others. Um, uh, number five, being thankful as you spend or pay your bills. Being thankful as you spend. So when you buy groceries and you go, oh, I'm buying groceries and, you know, things are on special right now and it's because I've got no money or, hey, this is on special right now. Woo! Save a dollar, save $2. Being thankful about it. Again, abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. So being thankful as you spend. Hey, I'm taking the family out for dinner. Oh, my gosh, it's costing me money. Oh, we shouldn't be doing this. Being thankful. If you're going to spend it, be thankful about it or don't do it. Number seven, energy exchange. I did touch on this briefly, but Think and Grow Rich says that when you write your goals about how much money you want to receive, make sure that you write what your energy exchange is going to be. So you do this because it is energy and that you focus on the service and not the money which means you give good customer service. I just want more money. I want more money. I want to sell as many appointments as possible. And it's suddenly you've, you've forgotten that. No, yes, I do want money because I deserve money. But for money, I'm going to give you this because that's my gift, my energy exchange for that. And I love doing that. And I want to do that for you. And that improves your customer service. And deliver what you what you promise on. Number eight is visualizing success. So use visualize, visualization techniques to see your business flourishing financially. Okay. Um, a couple of things. I'll often do this in breath work. I'll look up and I'll see it over here and I'll see a massive rainbow. I mean, it, it can be whatever it is, but sometimes I feel people need help with this if they've never done it before. But for me, even when I go for walks, I visualize a rainbow above me, over me, like a chakra rainbow coming from the heavens and the energy. And then I believe God is just dropping dollars and coins down into my life and in all different things. And I'll visualize this. I'll see this picture every day when I go for walks. And at the same time, I've got my arms up and I'm empowering and I'm giving back and I'm inspiring and motivating and influencing other people to be more successful in their business. And that's how I see it. So I visualize by seeing it that way. So whatever that is for you, but visualization hopes, it, uh, helps as well. Number nine is releasing emotional baggage. Um, and you may need to seek, seek a professional for this. Um, I've done hypnosis. I've done um, affirmations. I've done breath work. I, had, I do so much. <laughs> um, I've done psychology. I've done every, everything under the sun. Um, but find what works for you, but do something. Don't do nothing to release those um, emo the emotional baggage, so the financial setbacks and the deep underlying trauma because sometimes you need to talk with a professional to bring it out, okay? I know Jay Jay's a kinesiologist, so you'll be able to discuss it with her. Angelique does um, RTT therapy as well. Sally does Reiki. So we've got three different modalities on the call today. Um, Alison as well, she uh, does... Um, uh, intuitive kinesiology as well. So whatever it is, just get help and release it once and for all. Um, and yeah, hypnotherapy is great as well. Uh, number 10 is meditation and mindfulness. So make, make sure that in your day, there's allocated time for this. If there isn't allocated time in your diary, you're just going to let your diary run away with you. And the next minute, you've done mindfulness three weeks ago. 
and your mind and your thoughts are what are controlling and setting you up for success or failure every single day and you haven't allocated time for it today. So for me, it's 20 minutes before I get out of bed. And honestly, I'll decide whether or not I feel like reading the Bible, whether or not I want to read an empowerment book, whether or not I want to listen to a podcast, whatever it is, 20 minutes to empower my, my, my mind today to set me up for today with my coffee and I won't get out of bed until it's done. I just make a rule. I make it real easy for myself. So I'll wake up that little bit earlier. Number 11 is breath work. And, um, you know, we spoke earlier before we started recording about the benefits of breath work and how it seriously has transformed so many people's stress levels, anxiety, um, inner awareness, em emotional blockages, um, and just really, really has helped people set themselves up for success. So, um, you know, as part of the live, my live audience and live group, if you're a VIP, VIPP or a client, you do get access to our breathwork sessions on a Friday, which is run by um, a facilitator. All right. So I hope you got good new, uh, good notes because now it just gets even more challenging because that's the spiritual stuff, which is like a stab in the heart. Now I feel like, you know, we're moving into the number three, which is financial literacy and the financial practical sides of things. And this one I feel is like going to stab you in the head. So <laughs> I did warn you all before we started that this is going to be challenging from all aspects. So number one, not knowing your numbers. How many of you actually know what your expenses are? How many of you actually have a budget? How many of you actually plan so that you are less reactive, but you're more responsive to what you're doing? So you're not just living day by day, but you actually go, this is what I need. This is what I've got to do. And, and then you just don't do it unless it fits in the budget. How many of you are actually just spending and doing shit without looking at the budget? So you need to be sitting with your bookkeeper often. Bookkeepers don't like me. I've, I think I've changed bookkeepers like three times in the last year or so. Um, they don't like me because I'm constantly emailing them and going, is this 30% of, is, am I spending 30% of my operating expenses? Am I spending 30% of my income on operating expenses? Therefore, whatever my income is, I only spend 30% on that, on stuff. If profit first and all the wealthy business owners are saying that that's what they use to be financially successful and grow their businesses, why aren't we as small businesses doing it? It's not spend all the money in the world and don't pay yourself a salary and don't even look at your income. No, it's look at your income and only 30% of that spend. If that is the formula, why aren't you using it? Told you I was just going to stab you everywhere today. Sorry, today's really, really um, horrible. But the good thing about having a budget is you've got sense of control. So bookkeepers don't like me because I make them sit with me and I make them do this and they just want to do my numbers. But I want to make sure that I'm not just doing my numbers because numbers is just the past. I've already done that. I want to forward forecast and plan and have budgets and stick to it. My business was 80% more profitable this last year because I did that. And that meant I had to do some stuff in my business to make that happen. I had to increase my income. I had to decrease my expenses. I had to relook at my staff. I had to make them more efficient. I had to make them, I had to give them systems and processes. I had to make them more organized so that they deliver more stuff so I could get the most out of them and pay them, not less, but get the most out of them. And I had to get rid of one staff member so that I would fall into that 30%. And I was 80% more profitable this year than I was last year. Last year, I had more income and I had more expenses. I was doing 50% on operating expenses. Highly stressful. Don't do it. Number two, overspending. You're living above your means. I'm sorry, but you are. If you don't have money, you shouldn't be buying coffees out. If you don't have money uh, to pay your bills, you should not be eating out. You should not be buying alcohol. You should not have a gym contract. How do I know this? 
I was that person for the first four years in Australia. If the money ran out, I had no Centrelink, I had no family, I had no nothing. No Netflix, no Spotify, no alcohol, I'm telling you. We bought one slab of beer a month and that was it, or one bottle of wine a month and that was it because we had no money and it was that or food. So if you cannot pay your bills, stop overspending and living above your means. My ex-husband, after three years of putting his rent on his credit card, is now in freaking dire straits. Dire straits. He should have moved out of a five-bedroom house, which he didn't need three years ago and didn't, stayed there, lived above his means, and he is in the poop right now. And yet I bought a house when he lived in a five-bedroom house above his means. I stayed in a three-bedroom townhouse, saved and bought a house. Stop living above your means. Number three, good habits, discipline, being organized, improving efficiency, knowing your prices, using vouchers. For goodness sake, use a Coles card, use a Willie's card. You get points. You get to spend those points. Every now and then I get $10 back. When I do buy uh, nine coffees, I get my 10s free. And I go to McDonald's and I use the McDonald's one because McDonald's coffee is cheap. It's good. And you get a free one every 10 go coffees. So why wouldn't I? But I also only am allowed to do that twice a week now, not every day. Because that's in my budget. So good habits and being disciplined about it and being organized and being efficient. Using an Ampol card. Because you get an Ampol card and then you get leaders off. And at the same time, set small goals and reward yourself. So, for example, when I did buy my car, I took the family out for dinner to say, this is what happens when you work and you save because I want my children to have a good money mindset. So making sure that you do do that. Make sure it's in the budget first. But other things that, um, that, that I remember, when I had no money, I would go and buy big packets of stuff only when it was on special and I would break it up into little containers for the children. And I wouldn't buy the ones already in the snack packs because they double the price. I would decant and say that's a serve. But now we just buy stuff, even when it's not on special. Know your prices. I go into Coles and I Woolworths and I see where most of my stuff is, what's on special there for that week. And then I'll go there and I'll buy online for that week. Next week, I'll buy it when it's on special again. My gluten-free chips, uh, what are they called? Crisps are like, um, they are about $5.50 a bag. And I only buy them when they're 50% off. And my daughter hates it because it takes up all the pantry space. But I'll buy like five packets of it. Why would I want to pay $5.50 when I can get two for $5.50? And I have money to do it. But I don't do it because it's good habits and discipline. And I'm organized. Buy on special and say thank you. Thank you, it's on special. Woo Not because it's I'm broke and I can't afford it. Number four, paying by the due date. How many people I put things on a credit card or don't buy by the due date and then have to pay the late fees? How much money is that? Don't do that. Relook at your mortgage. Relook at your insurance company, your electricity. Every year I do this. I look at it and I go and I negotiate a better deal. My bank said to me that this year I was coming off a fixed interest rate and my mortgage was going from 2.4 up to 7.7. .7. I didn't just take it. I went to my mortgage broker and I said, what can we do? She got it down to 5.2. 5.2%. My best friend got the same letter from her bank and did that and, and went and joined up with her bank. She was too busy to go to her mortgage broker and explore a cheaper rate. And she is so stressed. She never sees me anymore, never goes out, never does anything. 
because she's so stressed about money all the time. And yet her daughter has extra curricular activities every day of the week. Your children do not need extracurricular activities every day of the week in Australia. They don't. So you've got to look at the truth of why that person's doing that. Diversifying income streams. So avoid relying solely on one income stream. I told a lady the other day, she was thinking about closing down her business. And I said to her, why don't you just get a part-time job? And her ego wouldn't allow her to get a part-time job. She'd rather close down a business that right now is heavily affected by the industry that she's in. And yet, if she just went and worked one or two days a week, she could still keep that business alive, get that money. But because it's only $27 an hour, her ego wouldn't allow it. Why? I had three jobs when I arrived here. If I had to go get another job now, I would. I would. So what? Go get another job. If it takes the edge off, do it. Better than closing your business down, but have a good attitude towards it. I am grateful I have this job packing shells at Coles because it helps bring in steady income to allow me to focus on my other job, to focus on my other business. Gratitude. Number six, emergency fund. So auto direct money into a high savings account. So I have used ING previously, ING. So every week, 10% of my income, and this is a profit first thing, 10%, it's also a biblical thing, 10% of your income every week should automatically go into a high savings account. So mine is ING. Now that I've got a, so this is where you've got to be financially literate. Now, because I've got an offset account, it's better for me to have my money in my offset account. So now my money, 10% of my income every week goes into my offset account. Very important. All right, so number four is discipline. I know right now I'm just like, oh, discipline. People with a bad money mindset can unwittingly repel both individuals and opportunities. So are you unwittingly repelling individuals, so people and opportunities due to behavioral and physiological things that stem from bad money mindset. Okay, repelling. Number one, negative energy. A person with a bad money mindset will unknowingly project negative energy, which can be less attractive to others. I remember going to a business coach when I was exploring business coaches many years ago. And the one business coach was like, oh, you know, yeah, I know it's a lot of money to spend with me and I know money's tired and spending. And I was like, this woman doesn't even believe in herself or spending money. How can I spend money with her? Oh, I don't have money right now to do that. I was like, oh, I don't really want to spend money with someone who's talking like that, who's projecting that. So negative energy manifests in constant complaining, pessimism, and overall lack of enthusiasm, making it less to be around. People can sense it. They can smell it in everything that you do, even in your online marketing, even in your tone when you're messaging people. Two, lack of confidence. A bad money mindset can lead to a lack of confidence in one's abilities. And this lack of self-assurance can be sensed by others and people are less likely to trust to trust or invest in that person. Number three, limited networking. So if you've got a negative money, uh, money mindset and you want to avoid networking or social gatherings or talking to other people, it's going to limit your potential opportunities and it's going to hinder people wanting to work with you. And it's going to hinder like-minded people being attracted to you because people with the same mindset are attracted. 
I'll tell you the story. It's, it's, it's one of the biggest stories ever. I was personal training um, and my twins were two years old and I just fell pr pregnant with Hannah. And I was personal training in South Africa and 5 a.m. I was running these um, uh, personal training classes every day at 5 a.m. because it was the most popular time. It was through winter. And I, I didn't want to tell anyone I was pregnant because I just had a miscarriage just before that. Um, and I didn't want to tell anyone about it just in case it happened this time. And I was teaching five days a week at 5 a.m. in winter. And I went, like, I'm just going to take my five ladies and I'm going to ask them, can they come into a group session at 5 a.m.? And I'm going to put those three ladies into a group session. Um, I'll, they, they were each coming two days a week. So I'll put them into three sessions. I'll make the same amount of money, but they'll now be in a group session together instead of a one on one. One of the worst things that ever happened to me and one of the biggest lessons. I put these three ladies together and they were the worst blend of people to put together. When they were one-on-one, -on -one, I could motivate and inspire them and they would take it. When they were together, they bitched, moaned, complained and, and actually negatively brought themselves down and even me negatively brought myself down and was one of the biggest lessons I ever made in my life about putting people into groups. And I think Daryl's actually mentioned it once before and he said, oh, we should have accountability buddies. And I said, I've done that previously in eight-week challenges at the gym. And if you put, so if you let people choose, sometimes they choose the wrong people. Sometimes they choose the right people. Sometimes they choose the wrong people and it actually has the worst effect. Or you put people in a group and they resent you for the group that they've put you in because they're either the wrong people or the right people. And I don't want that freaking responsibility. So you want accountability, buddies? You sort yourselves out here and do it. I don't want that. So I have experience in that and I've seen it go sideways. It was horrific how it actually changed their entire, my session with them and themselves. It was horrific, absolutely horrific. So um, number four is um, fear of uh, Fear of taking risks. So a bad money mindset can often include a fear of taking risks and can deter people from venturing into new opportunities or pursuing ventures with people. Um, people may be drawn to those who exhibit a positive attitude and a willingness to take risks. So if you like, um, 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 and you're emailing people back and you in your social media, you're hesitant and in your emails, you're hesitant. That fear of risk taking that you have in yourself is going to come onto someone else. Number five is financial dependence. So people with a poor money mindset might be more inclined to rely on others financially, maybe more inclined to rely on others financially. This dependence can strain relationships and deter individuals from associate, um, who prefer to associate with financially responsible and independent individuals. If you if you about to talk to some, to someone and do business with them and they go, ah, oh, you know, I'm just about to get a loan from this person over here and just in the process of negotiating like a deal with this person here. And my, my brother's actually one of those people. Like every time I talk to him, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't really want to do anything because it sounds like you're financially dependent on all these people. Don't sound very financially confident in yourself on your own. I've put this in the discipline category because you have to be disciplined here to actually go be aware of these things and change them. Number six is limited vision and ambition, meaning that you can have a limited vision of your future and you can have lack of ambition to achieve success. And this can discourage other people from wanting to work with you um, because they're looking for people with drive and determination, which it seems you don't have. Number seven is lack of accountability. So if you've got a lack of money mindset, um, it may be difficult for others to gauge how stable you are and do joint ventures with you. So they're going to steer away from you. Um, avoidance of financial discussions. So uh, if you are shying away from financial, um, financial conversations, people around that uh, are also going to feel that same thing with you. Um, and it's going to reinforce the negative outlook. So you're either going to attract you're either going to deter people or you're going to attract people of the same mindset, which you don't want to do. 
and tendency to attract similar mindsets, which is just reiterating that. So reinforcing people with a negative outlook. And trust me, you don't want to get into people who've got a negative mindset when it comes to money. So that is a lot. And um, and I wanted to share that with you because, as I said, it's stuff that I, I've seen coming up quite a bit recently. And I, I'm seeing it in a lot of my clients, a lot of my past clients, a lot of people who have re-engaged my services. And I've seen it come into my life up and down in various capacities. And it's something that I've had to actively work on in all those different areas. So in the practical side, in the woo-woo side, in the discipline side, in my work ethic side, I've had to go and put focused energy in all those four different areas in order to do it. So it's not just the, I'm going to manifest all this money in a firm and I'm just going to visualize, but then they don't go put it in their diary and they don't become financially literate, literate um, and then they don't go check themselves or be self-aware. And that is why today I've shared with you those four different areas because check yourself in those four different areas. Where am I strong? What do I need to work on? Set yourself up for a plan and make sure that you do it. And I know today was really difficult. So we're going to take it to our... Um, those are live audience today. So if you do want to be part of the live audience, check in the comments below. Um, you can either be a VIP, VIPP or a client of mine and get access to these live conversations um, where before we have a networking event, um, network, collaborate, check in on how we're doing. And afterwards, we actually explore this further into each, each of our businesses and see how we can better support each other. Um, and yeah, so just book a one-on-one -on -one or just email me back and we'll have a conversation about how you can do that. Uh, next week, we will be presenting on threads uh, for those of you who want to sign up just in time for that. Um, that's Chantel Girardi, Online Business Marketing.